This is the rebirth of the Kia Optima. From humble to hot, from bland to bold. The Optima versus the previous generation was night and day. It was a high-risk makeover with billions at stake. Could a plain Jane sedan be turned into a supermodel? where the Kia race team from Kinetic Motorsports chooses their winners to compete against the likes of Porsche and BMW in the Pirelli World Challenge Series. The Optima race car actually came from this plant. Uh, it was vehicles we built here on this line. Uh, and during the original discussion, we thought that talking with the team, uh, the race team, that they would gut the interior of the car and part of the metal and then add reinforcement. What we found is when they started to look at our vehicle that the, the actual metal structure of our vehicle was in fact enough of what they needed and actually better equipped for, for what they needed to set up their race car. So there was only small modifications that needed to be made. Welcome to Detroit, the Motor City. The Optima is competing in the Pirelli World Challenge and has to grab headlines and race glory to truly put its critics to rest. Victory, so the theory goes, will elevate the sedan to the next level. When you see a Kia out on the track with things like Porsches and Mustangs, muscle cars, uh, Kia's come a long way in the past you know, 10 years, just before they had this you know, reputation for just having cheap, affordable cars. Standing out is not going to be easy. The Optima will race in a series with the most experienced teams and manufacturers. The brands that we're racing against have had more than a century of racing, um, so we're really the rookies at this. We're actually kind of punching up a weight class. The Korean car maker is using veteran drivers on the race circuit to give them the best chance on the track and also to provide invaluable data on how the car performs. Every time I pull the gear, the car is, uh -oh, uh -oh, you know. Michael Galati was our first choice. He's kind of the, the number one driver in the team, and uh, his credentials speak for themselves. He's been World Challenge champion five times. He's a very fast driver, but very bright and very good feedback in terms of what the car needs to keep getting better. I've driven for Audi for seven years and uh, Gran Turismo, and uh, I've driven for uh, Honda and um, Volvo. I mean, I've driven all kinds of cars. And from the base of this, the Optima, it's fantastic because uh, you got a very good base car. Late modifications are being made based on the driver's practice runs and qualifying sessions. Um, I think it's a, it's a super important thing to have a good communication and a good chemistry between the drivers and the engineer so that you can absolutely extract every ounce of feedback and then be able to translate those, those feelings that they get in their bums and their backs and, and make the changes to the car that then make it quicker. And then it's go time. Start your engines! The first time I saw the car on the track, I mean, I was surprised because it was one of its first shakedown runs. And it's only got a two liter turbocharged engine, but the first time I saw it, it was quick. It's like if someone's in a Mustang in the series on track and they get passed by a four door Kia Optima in a straight line, I mean, that's, that's kind of a shocker. And, you know, it's kind of cool. Competing against established veterans in a serious series like this is like throwing yourself to the wolves. The critics are watching, so Kia has to prove its mettle. On a track like Detroit where there's no margin for error, you know, you, you've got to be smart and, and get the most out of the car, but really think. Unexpectedly, the team gets a rude introduction to just what can go wrong. Big move and a contact down to the inside. Big hit kill. The 36 Kia, look at the damage to the right side. Coming up, regrouping after the crash. Can the Optima rebound from the hard knock in Detroit? High-end design, high-tech production, and the hopes of a company tied to its success. The Optima has undergone a complete transformation. The company is putting billions of dollars in planning and investment on the line here at the track, entering the Optima in its first ever production car race series to silence the critics once and for all. You're really known for also taking part in racing and being successful. It's, it's a different thing for the brand. 
Look at this. Oh, big move and a contact down to the inside. Big hit kill. Michael Galati gets turned to the 36 Kia. Look at the damage to the right side. In a mid-season race in Detroit, the race team has its first taste of adversity after a crash. Yesterday was a tough day in the office. Uh, after we started the race, we had a big shunt, we had a crash. I got hit right in the right corner, entered in the corner. Look at this! Oh! And I thought at the time we were done. Down to the inside, big hit. But then again, uh, I was able to restart and keep on going. For all my year in racing, I shunted like that. I thought I was going to be done for the, for the day. But actually, the Optima, the structural, it was so good that we would be able to finish the, the race in eighth place. This is a very dangerous sport. And you're doing the same. I'm <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, we're both hanging over there. We're both made it. <laughs> it was a quite a day, but then the guys that did a fantastic job of fixing the car, and the car rolled up together. I think the expectations for the Optima uh, from a racing perspective uh, is that uh, we're going to go out and win a, win a few races. Um, obviously, the, this is our first year. It's a development year. Despite the setback, the team is far from discouraged. They've come a long way with this car since its bold new design was first sketched out. Everyone from the drivers to the technicians to the executives watching from a distance want to stay positive. With any race program, the first priority is reliability. You need to finish races. You need to show that you can be there and be a credible threat for, for finishing races. And then the next step is to get progressively faster. After the meltdown in Detroit, the team regroups to find out what went wrong. Turns out the car was unstable under the hard braking needed on the Detroit track, so the team gets to work on a combination of new sway bars and different shock valving to make braking more stable. The launch control mechanism, which helps the car leap forward from a standing start, needed retuning. It was way too slow. And finally, they tackle the turbo ramp up. Drivers complain that the power coming off the corners is too dramatic, causing the wheels to spin. The guys in the engine shop reprogram the car's electronics to allow the power to be fed in more smoothly. North of the border at the CTMP Raceway, formerly known as Mosport, the Optima team is ready to try for glory once again. And a great launch. The team has learned from past mistakes, but with the industry's toughest critics closely monitoring their performance, the buck stops here. They want to land on the podium today. People like to get behind the underdog. They like to, to root for the, the folks who maybe are new and shouldn't do that well, but then overachieve. A photo finish for the Kia boys, their first victory in World Challenge, and they make it a 1-2. The Optima has just won its uh, first race. We came first and second, so we're absolutely ecstatic. It was a double-header weekend, so we actually got a, a, an unbelievable collection of silverware. The 1-2 win is a coup for the long shot, another defining moment for the new Optima. A car that started life as a grocery getter is now piling up international design awards and demanding respect on the track. To see a mainstream front-wheel drive family sedan racing against Porsche Caymans and Mustang GTs and beating them, um, that had to look pretty good from Kia's perspective. When we participate in racing, it puts Kia in a, in a different level. Somehow we belong to the club. If you're really known for also taking part in racing and being successful, it's, it's a different thing for the brand. So it's not only the design, it's also other things that are very important and that we're doing. The surprise has been that a, a brand that had sort of come from seemingly nowhere, you know, 16 years in the United States with, with absolutely no racing heritage, has, uh, there's championship material in these cars and I think we're going to realize that next year. Seeing a Kia Optima on the street, everybody's head turns. What's that car? But then when you see it as a race car, it's even, it's even more passion-inspiring. It's the thing that's up on the kid's wall on a poster. Well, the Optima coming here, it's sustained growth in the company. It shows off our new design direction and ability to compete in a market that where others didn't see we could compete. And when you see in reality people driving this car, you get this emotion that I can't really explain. It's a good feeling. It's a really good feeling. But I don't think this has ever happened as fast in our, that in my history, that a company has gone so dramatically 180 from virtually 
unnoticed and unloved, if you will, to being desired and envied. And it is, it, it has everything to do with design. We really went out to get a car that is a statement, that you want to be seen in it, you want to be proud about it and say, yes, I bought that.